Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, September 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording back in Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got another post by Jesse LaCrue when dealing with malware samples from honeypots. A quick triage is important. You usually have so many samples to work with. And one of the things I usually recommend is, well, a check with virus total. Is it already known, that particular sample? How old is it? So uh, that's a quite useful initial triage tool. And Jesse took a closer look at the results that he has been getting from virus total when submitting malware from his honeypots. Just to summarize some of the key observations and uh, of course there's more detail in his full post. First, there are a number of vendors that will not flag any of the malware caught by the honeypot as malicious. Well, uh, not really such a big problem necessarily. Some vendors are just not focusing on, for example, Linux malware. This is usually Linux malware we're talking about here because it is a Raspberry Pi honeypot. Also, it usually is being attacked by most of these IoT style uh, malware uh, families like Mirai. And of course, a lot of IoT uh, vendors and such, there is no real anti-malware for it. So some of the large malware vendors don't really cover uh, these samples uh, very well. So a vendor not finding uh, the samples is malicious is not necessarily a sign that this vendor's anti-malware product is of lower quality. Secondly, uh, Jesse noted that a number of the number of AV engines detecting a particular sample will increase over time. Now, of course, that's not a big uh, surprise. Uh, after all, it takes a while for different vendors to find a new sample. There have, of course, in the past been some evidence uh, of vendors just sort of blindly copying uh, signatures after a sample was found malicious on a virus total. But what's, what's a little bit surprising is that it sometimes it takes weeks or months after a sample was initially discovered before it is uh, being then detected as malicious by some other vendor's engine. Again, this may be also due to a different focus of a different uh, style of malware than uh, these uh, fairly specific honeypot samples. Another uh, issue, of course, that has been ongoing for a long, long time, pretty much as long as I can remember being sort of in this industry, that uh, different vendors come up with different names for different malware. There is no real great coordination. There were efforts out there to sort of assign like numbers, uh, sort of unique uh, numbers uh, to malware. But uh, it's a little bit like, you know, with all the threat intel uh, group naming and such, that sometimes uh, vendors, when they're talking about different, when they're using different names, they're also talking about slightly sort of different uh, malware families. And there isn't always sort of a clean boundary where like you know, one malware family ends and the next one starts as they often sort of borrow code from each other. And then we got updates from Apple. Well, Apple today released the next version of iOS, watchOS, and tvOS. This coincides with the new hardware becoming available in the next few days, of course, announced about a week ago. A couple of things uh, to note are Apple uh, did address a vulnerability in iOS that has already been exploited. CVE 2022-32917. It affects iOS 15, as well as the new version uh, iOS uh, 16 that was just released today. So what this means is if you are receiving a device uh, in the mail uh, later this week, I think Friday, the watches are supposed to arrive, not 100% sure when the first iPhones will arrive. You may have to patch them. They may come with an iOS 16 version that does not have this security patch installed yet. Also, Apple released patches uh, for the current generation, I call it. So iOS 15 as well. You don't have to do the major update in order to be protected. These major operating system updates, they include a bunch of new features 
and well often are known to be somewhat buggy so you may want to wait a little bit before you take the plunge and install ios 16 it's very easy to just install the updates for ios 15 when you're seeing that update screen in ios uh, it'll ask you well do you want to go all the way do you want to go to ios uh, 16 or do you just want to install the latest version of ios 15 and i would uh, recommend you're going with this but of course that depends a little bit on how eager you are to test these new features. There's also a new version of uh, tvOS. Now for tvOS and watchOS, uh, the security details have not been released yet. That's a little bit odd in this case, but uh, what often happens is that uh, if some of the security issues that are being patched in these operating systems will be patched in a later update to one of the other operating systems like Mac OS or uh, iPad OS, then uh, they will not uh, release the security details unless that update has been released. Now we did get the Mac OS security update the full update for the next major version for iPadOS and macOS will probably uh, come out a month from today. So approximately. So uh, currently the major update only affects iOS, watchOS and tvOS. Well, earlier I talked about vulnerabilities in IoT device and how it can be a little bit a blind spot for your security software. Arctic Wolf is reporting now that a vulnerability in the Mitel MyVoice Connect software, uh, obviously it's a kind of a voice over IP uh, system, uh, is being exploited uh, by uh, a ransomware gang. Uh, this particular vulnerability is used essentially to cross the network perimeter. And then once the voice over IP system is compromised, then the attacker will perform lateral movement and attack other devices in the victim's network and then use BitLocker in order to encrypt hard drives and launch sort of a extortion and ransomware attack. Uh, data is also being exfiltrated. The exploited Mitel vulnerability was patched back in new June. I think I covered it, at least I remember uh, mentioning something about uh, Mitel, and it is pretty trivial to exploit, so absolutely make sure that you do have this covered. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening, and talk to you again tomorrow.